Hi, this is Dr. Krause with part three of my Bode plotting or frequency response module on the frequency domain analysis of dynamic systems and control. Um, in the first two parts, we talked about Bode sketching by hand, and I did some examples in part two. In this video, we're going to talk about how to generate Bode plots using Python and the Python control module, although that's semi-optional. You must have NumPy and matplotlib, but you don't have to have Python control, though it's in pip, and so I don't know why you wouldn't. It's excellent stuff. Um, and then in the next couple of videos, we'll talk about how to interpret Bode plots and use them for system ID, and then I want to introduce my Bode problem generator for generating practice problems for my students so that they have that before our next exam. And then we'll conclude this series with how to run uh, swept sign experiments and do Bode plots of experimental data. And I'll have an experimental example for you. Um, so I had to argue in the, I think it was the first video, but I just want to review this, why you should sketch Bode plots by hand. Um, I think the main reason is that it deepens your understanding of what a Bode plot is. Um, and I think that's really, really important. I want to train students who know how to think about dynamic systems, not merely um, run code that they don't understand, basically. Um, but if you know how to sketch them by hand, it also is really, really easy to spot mistakes if you accidentally type a transfer function into a computer incorrectly, for example. Um, and then I think it also better prepares you for using Bode plots for system identification if you know what to look for because you've thought about how to draw it. Um, but ultimately, if you want something that's accurate, um, you're going to do some kind of numeric analysis or whatever, or you're dealing with experimental data, you have to know how to generate Bode plots using a computer. Obviously, MATLAB has lots and lots of tools for that. Um, I think it's just the Bode, B-O-D-E, all lowercase command. Um, I haven't done that in a long time. Um, but I want to specifically talk about how to, and there's plenty of tutorials online for that kind of thing. If you just typed MATLAB Bode into a search engine, I'm sure you would get lots of good information. Um, I want to talk about specifically how to do it in Python. And so kind of the big idea, you need to create an S vector. Um, that would be a vector of, I was going to say complex numbers, but technically they're actually purely imaginary numbers because the Bode plot is along the imaginary axis of the complex plane. And then I want to evaluate my transfer function at every S equal J omega of that vector and that would leave me with a complex vector that would have both magnitude and phase in my gj omega i would call that and then from there i need to find the db magnitude and the phase of that complex vector and plot them so let's jump into that um, some of that is kind of summarized here um, i guess i'll put this code somewhere that people can get access to it probably on my github page um, but yeah, big idea is that you have some transfer function and you're trying to evaluate it at some vector of frequencies where omega would be in radians per second. And we're trying to find then gj omega and we're going to plot magnitude and phase on a semi log x axis to help us uh, kind of well, a couple of things to be able to visualize a large range of frequencies on one plot, but it also makes certain aspects of Bode plots kind of uh, straight lines for certain regions. And part of it is just historical and um, especially the decibels. Um, but to me, that's how Bode plots are supposed to look. And so I just do it that way. And there are different schools of thought on that. Um, and as I mentioned in the slide, we need to generate that S vector and then evaluate G. So I got to import my typical matplotlib numpy kind of stuff. I'm also importing the control module. I'll use that later, though I said that is technically optional. Um, as I mentioned, Bode plots are generally done over a wide range of frequencies, and so I'm using the log space command. And what that's going to do for me is create a vector that goes from 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the positive fourth. And I guess since I've gone to this length of, or this amount of trouble, I will also show you that the length of that is a thousand. So 10 to this power is the minimum, 10 to this power is the maximum. That is the number of points and it is equally spaced in a geometric sense. So this, basically so that the points would look equally spaced on a logarithmic scale. 
Then once I have f, I need omega and s, and so if f is in hertz, then omega is just 2 pi f, and s is just j times omega. And in Python 3, you probably don't need this 0.1 anymore, but that's and maybe you never needed it because it was a complex number, but that's just a habit for me. Um, so for our first example, this was also the first example we did a Bodhi sketch of. So when we're done, we'll compare the Python version to my sketch. But I've got two first order poles multiplied together. If I plugged in S was equal to zero, I would expect to get a magnitude of one or zero dB. And then when I get to P1 and P2, I expect the slopes to de decrement by minus 20 dB per decade and the phase to decrement by 90 degrees. So I define those two poles. And then if I'm doing this without the Python control module, I can simply write this out. And since S is already defined as an imaginary vector, that code would be enough to give me a vector of complex numbers specifically evaluated at every uh, point in the f is equal to minus 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the fourth. Um, now from there I need to find the db magnitude so that is 20 times the log 10 of the absolute value of gj omega and the phase and if I was doing this the hard way the phase would be the arctan 2 keep in mind that arctan 2 expects two inputs um, the y comma x components, and then it automatically considers the quadrant when it's doing its math. And NumPy by default is going to return radians, so I'm going to multiply by 180 and divide by pi. Um, it turns out there's a, a built-in function called angle in NumPy that does all of this for you for complex vectors. But if you were totally doing this the hard way just to illustrate all the steps, that's what you would do. And then when you get generated, you got ready to generate the Bode plot, those are generally done with... Uh, magnitude on the top half and phase on the bottom half we're doing a semi log and I've specifically hard-coded some y and x limits that make sense I just y limits I guess for this thing and so if I evaluated that I would get this Bode plot and again so we, we pass through 0 dB we get out here to the so p1 was like 1 Hertz right and P2 is 100 hertz. So we get out to the 1 hertz spot. We're 3 dB down. Our slope goes down to minus 20 dB per decade. Our phase passes through minus 45 at that 1 hertz. And then would settle off at minus 90, except that we come to the next pole at 100 hertz. Our slope decrements again. So it goes from minus 20 to minus 40. Our phase goes down to minus 180. And so that is the Bode plot kind of generated the hard way, not using anyone's built-in tools, but it helps me understand every step. Now, if I had the Python control module, and again, if you don't have it, uh, pip or pip3 install python-control should be all that it takes, either at a terminal, if you're in a Linux or a Mac, or possibly an Anaconda prompt, or however you would install things from pip, depending on how you've installed Python and NumPy. And if you have NumPy in Windows, I assume that you somehow know how to install things from pip. Um, so I create the transfer function. Now, if I, in order to do that, if I was going to do it in one step, I'd have to multiply out the S plus P1 times S plus P2 in the denominator. And I could take the time to do that. But it would just be just as easy to create two separate individual first order transfer functions and simply multiply them together. So when I do that, I get this number. Uh, this has been rounded to four digits, but uh, you get the idea. So if I wanted to evaluate P1 times P2, this is technically 3947.84, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I did that intermediate calculation. If I had forgotten to put this in the numerator, then I would expect to actually start at a negative 72 decibels. Um, and if I wanted to check this number, so S plus P1 times S plus P2 should be S squared plus P1 plus P2 plus P1 times P2. So this is P1 times P2, check, and this is P1 plus P2. Okay, whatever. Um, then using the Python control module, I can simply say, give me G of S, where S is already defined. There's actually a, a built-in Bode function, and we'll get to that uh, on the second part of the example. Um, but if I just evaluate G at S, where S is my vector, then that would automatically spit out this exact same GJ omega 
uh, vector, and I can generate the Bode plot from there. So let's pause for a second before we do the second example and compare this Bode plot from Python to a scan of the one that I did in the Bode sketching examples in part two. So I had come in here by hand and identified one hertz and 100 hertz and said, these are my asymptotes, and I'm going to kind of fudge that in. And these are the points where I would pass through 50% phase transition, and so it would look like that. And so my claim is that this rough sketch is pretty close to what came out of Python. So this is a good way to double check my sketching abilities if I wanted to do so. Okay, on to the second example. So we had um, S plus, well, I think I wrote it down here. Apparently I didn't, yeah. So we had S plus Z over S times S squared plus two zeta omega n S plus omega n squared. There's a pure integrator. There's a first order zero and a second order pole. So I can define my uh, zero to be at two hertz. Uh, my Second order pole was at 200 hertz, and zeta was 0.1. And so my transfer function has an s plus z in the numerator. It has s squared plus 2 zeta omega n, s plus omega n squared times s. So these actually become s cubed, s squared, and s to the first. But those were the same as the values we were talking about in the part two video. And again, I can just use the Python control module to immediately evaluate that transfer function at every point on my S vector. I can find the dB magnitude and phase, and I can reuse this slightly complicated chunk of code to generate this Bode plot. And again, I start at a minus 20 dB per decade slope with minus 90 degrees of phase. My slope goes flat when I get to the frequency of my zero, which was two hertz. My phase goes from minus 90 up to zero, and then we get to this uh, 200 hertz, and we transition to minus 180 phase and minus 40 dB per decade slope. So I claim that this is a pretty good approximation of this. I was kind of guessing at the height of this peak, if I wanted to, I could have more carefully evaluated that. Uh, but otherwise, I claim this is a pretty good verification that my sketch was, was reasonable. Now, this is important to know how to do, so you're not just depending on other people's code that you don't understand, but it's kind of painful to have to type in 10 or 15 lines to get a Bode plot. So you got a couple of options. There is an automatic Bode plot function within the Python control module. You pass in the transfer function, or possibly a list of transfer functions, a vector, of omegas and I put this down here in my note omega must be in radians per second regardless of whether or not you're asking it to plot in Hertz and you're plugging you're passing in omega not s is equal to j omega the code already will multiply by j for you so if you plug in j omega it'll get multiplied by another j and become negative omega and that will mess you up so if you're gonna use their code uh, make sure you know how to do that correctly. And then because they didn't want to lock into a specific team or school of thought as far as what a properly formatted Bode looks like, there's options for whether you want to use decibels, whether you want to use hertz, and whether you want to use degrees. And so if you don't do decibels, I think it still does a log magnitude, but just doesn't multiply by 20. If you don't do hertz, then your x-axis will be in radians per second, and everyone will know that you are a theorist. Um, and if you don't use degrees, then your phase will be plotted in radians, and again, everyone will know that you're a theorist. So uh, just be aware of that. <laughs> Not, yeah, sorry, that's mostly a joke. Okay, um, so that works, and in one line, you have this fantastic-looking Bode plot. There's other options. You could just do help control.bode plot and find out what your other options are. Although I kind of like this grid thing they got going on. Um, and if I don't specify out, then it returns, um, I think it's gonna return dB magnitude. Well, I don't know if the magnitude that it returns depends on your dB settings or not. And then it will return a phase. And again, I don't know if what it returns is automatically in radians or if it matches whatever you've requested um, in hertz and degrees. Be aware of those things. Um, so that's really, really helpful. 
Um, I also have my own code. I don't know if this is valuable or not. Certainly there's not much wrong with this. Um, one thing that would come in that's, that might be hard to do using their stuff is, and again, um, Dr. Richard Murray and the rest of the people contributing to the Python control uh, module have done fantastic work. I'm super thankful for them. Um, it's been done really, really well, especially all the state space work that they've done, not trying to um, take away at all from what they've done. I had my own Bode Utils module um, before their code was written. And the one thing that I like that it allows me to do is if I have some experimental data and I need to massage the phase beforehand, and that always happens, you're always having to find regions where you're adding and subtracting 360 degrees to try to make your phase look good, then I can come up with my own dB magnitude and phase vectors and then quickly generate a clean Bode plot without it having to explicitly come from a transfer function. And so I don't know if in the Python control module they've already done that. So my Bode Utils module is available on my GitHub site under my teaching repository. And so you could grab this if this would be helpful to you. Um, there are two main functions to be aware of. One is just bodeutils.bodeplot, and that expects a frequency vector in hertz, a dB magnitude vector, and a phase, and it will generate... Um, the Bode plot in one line of code if you already have those three vectors. Alternatively, if what you have is GJ omega and you don't want to have the extra step of having to find the dB magnitude and the phase explicitly, then Bode plot 2 will take frequency comma GJ omega. And so here's a one line of code having already evaluated GJ omega as a complex vector that again generates the exact same body plot. So just be aware of those different options. So my code, one option. Um, the Python control modules, control.bodyplot, plot, an excellent option, especially if you just have a transfer function and not experimental data. And then at least know a little bit about how to do it by hand. Um, yeah, I think that's all I got to say for Bode plots in Python. I will put this code somewhere that uh, people can download it and let me know if you have questions.